I understand you're a friend of Harry March. Who's Harry March? Best safe cracker around. Maybe the best in the business. Never heard of him. Okay. Just thought you might be interested in a deal. Wait a minute, kid. What kind of a deal? What difference does it make? You said you didn't know him. I uh, make friends real easy. What kind of a deal? A big deal. A million dollars. Cash. Hamlet picks up the skull of Yorick and delivers a famous speech. Now, uh, to whom was this speech delivered? Vince, would you mind answering the question, please? Vince! Uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Carter. Would you repeat the question, please? To whom was Hamlet's famous graveside speech delivered? I don't know, ma'am. I didn't catch the name and address on the envelope. <laughs> That's very amusing, Vince. I don't think that you'll find a failing mark in this course quite as jocular. Marvin, would you answer the question, please? Yes, sir, the, uh, the speech is from Act 5, Scene 1, delivered to Horatio and the Grave Digger. Very good. If some of the others of you would emulate Marvin, concentrate your efforts toward learning something, you might all be a lot better off. Well, I guess that should be enough for today. I uh, just want to remind you that your term papers are due on Wednesday. And for several of you who are on the borderline, you might profit by putting a little extra time and energy into this paper. Oh, Marvin, can I see you a second? Yes, sir. Have, uh, have you given any more thought to college? The term's gonna be over in a week, you know. Well, I still haven't made up my mind what I'm gonna do, sir. Oh, Marv, you had so much to offer. It's a shame if you don't take advantage of it. Well, I know, sir. I, I'd like to go to college, but, well, it costs money, you know. And... Yes, I know. And I'm still working on that scholarship for you. I think maybe we'll be able to figure something out. I sure hope so. Thank you, Mr. Carter. Hey, Fink. What's the idea of trying to make a fool out of me in there? I don't understand what you mean. That's all. Oh, can it? Now, you know what I mean. Answering that question like you were some kind of a king or something. Okay, Vince. Look, any time you think Vince. you're better than me, we... Get your big paws off of him. Hey, when did you start playing nursemaid to this creep? Ever since you started trying to be Tarzan or somebody. That's all right, Betty. No, it's not. Now get out of here and leave him alone, you animal. Okay, baby. If you want to play mother, I'm not going to stand in your way. Am I going to see you tonight? No. I have other plans. 
Okay, baby. You change your mind, just give me a call. You didn't have to do that, Betty. Maybe you're getting mad or something. Look, what do I care? The world's full of guys like you. You're kind of special. Well, look, I'm serious. I've kind of wanted to say this to you for a long time. Betty, you go with Vince. He's sort of the star of the whole school. Boys like Vince will never amount to anything. Betty, will you go out with me? I practically asked you out, haven't I? Well, you, I mean, well, how about tonight? I thought you said you were busy tonight. I'm busy for him. Well, sure. Fine. Pick me up at 8. Okay, I'll pick you up at 8. I'll see you then. Yeah. Betty? What about Vince? Don't worry about Vince. I can take care of him. Hey, Mark, that you? Yeah, Pop, it's me. Everything go okay today? Uh-huh. Hey, how come you're getting all dressed up? I got a date tonight. Real sharp girl. I met down Tony's. Well, I've got a date tonight, too. You do? Mm-hmm. Well, who with? Betty Alexander. Betty Alexander. Hey. Hey, she's the best-looking chick in the whole school, ain't she? She sure is. What in the world is she going out with you for? It's okay, Pop. No, I'm not much, but she likes me. Gee, kid, fine, fine. Just to chip off the old block after all, huh? Yeah, I guess so. Hey, Marv. I was wondering, you, you got any money on you? Well, a couple of dollars, Pop, but... Look, kid, this is a real fancy girl, you know what I mean? Well, I'm going to have to take her out to supper, probably, and... Well, you know. I know, Pop, but I got a date tonight myself. I don't get paid until the 15th. How much you got? Well, six dollars and some change. Tell you what, we'll split even, okay? Okay, Pop. Oh. By the way, I think I'm going to have a job next week. Really? Yep. I met a guy today who's sure he can put me on full time. Be swell, Pop. Hey, don't worry, boy. I'll hang on to this one. No more booze for me, I promise. Pretty soon we'll have money enough to get out of this dump. You can quit that crummy job of yours and go to college like you want. Like your mother wanted you to. I know, Pop. Thanks, kid. Have a good time tonight, huh? You too, Pop. Sorry, Betty Ellis. Oh, that's okay. At least it was a good movie. It's just that I... Well, I had to give some money to Pop and... Oh, just forget it. I'm having a lovely time. Betty? I've got almost a dollar left. Would you like to have a Coke?
this guy grabs this chick by the neck, see? And he gives her a couple of whacks right across the face. <laughs> Man, he likes to knock her head off. <laughs> hey, Daddy. You don't dig my act or something? What's the matter, Benny? That chick Betty bugging you. Nah, she don't bug me none. Yeah, why should she? We got so much stuff around here, we have to beat it off with a club. Yeah, so where's it all hit? Hey, am I seeing right? Oh, man, I don't believe it. I must be cracking up. What is she doing with that thing? Well, I thought the zoo closed at 6 o'clock. Yeah? So how come you got one of the animals out for a walk? Very funny. Look, Betty, I, I think we'd better go on home. I've got some homework to do. You aren't going to let these big apes scare no, you away, are you? No, it's not that. It's just I've got some homework to do. OK. Come on. Well, good night, boys. Better stay off the streets before the dog catcher sees you without your licenses. Well, she sure got salty in a big hurry. Where does that cheap broad come off, talking to us like that? Hey, Vinny. Let's follow him and give him a going over, huh? Yeah. Like the guy in the story that Bert was telling. Oh. You guys stay here. Hey. I thought you said that chick didn't move you. She don't. Not at all. Next time, maybe. You mean there's going to be a next time? Well, if you want it. If I want it, of course I do. I was just afraid. Well, I'm not real smart or anything. I, I thought I might be kind of dull. Oh, no. You're not dull. Thanks. Marv, I hate to ask you for a favor or anything. Go ahead. Anything you want. Well, it's Mr. Carter's Shakespeare class. You know, I'm kind of on the borderline. If I don't pass this class, I'm not going to graduate. And my old man would kill me for sure. Well, if you write a good term paper, you'll pass. That's just it. So I don't understand him. Sh Shakespeare, I mean. He's... He's so deep. I don't know what to do. You want me to write a paper for you? Oh, no. I just thought maybe you'd help me a little bit. I don't mind. It'll only take me a couple of hours. Would you? I mean, would you really? Thanks, Marv. I'll never forget it. Well, good night. I'll see you tomorrow. me to death. Look, what's with you two? With me and Marv? Oh, you can't be serious. Look, you were with him. You went out with him instead of me. Oh, but honey, I just wanted him to write my term paper for me. You sure that's all? Well, of course, silly. You don't think I could possibly see anything in him, do you? <laughs> no, nah, I didn't think so. Well, you see, actually, it's kind of for us. If I don't pass the course, I won't graduate. My parents won't let us get married or anything. Well, yeah. But, uh... Well, why did you kiss him? Kiss him? <laughs> you call that a kiss? Now, this is what I call a kiss. Betty? Yeah. 
Have you ever thought about marrying anybody? Sure. You know, I wanted to marry Rock Hudson once, but he was taken at the time. So then I decided I'd marry Gary Cooper, and I found out he had a daughter older than me. So. I'm serious, Betty. You know what I'm getting at. After all, Marvin, you have to go to college and everything. I won't go to college. I'll get a full-time job. I bet Mr. Matthews will put me on for $75 a week. $75? I guess I misled you just a little. I mean, you're sweet and smart. And I think someday you'll really be somebody important. Little Betty isn't ready to settle down and try and live on $75 a week. Look at, I've been poor too long for that. Oh, look, I'd, I'd better be going. My old man will be full of questions. He thinks I'm a tramp. What's the matter? What's the matter? You said your father thinks you're a tramp? Just when he's feeling good. If you could hear some of the things he's... One night when my mom was out, he... Someday I'm going to show him. I'm going to come back here with my diamonds and my furs, and I'm going to throw them right in his stick. Marv, hmm? how come you ain't out with Betty tonight? No, she wanted to stay home tonight. Said it makes her old man happy if she stays in every once in a while. Oh, I see. Look, Marv. Hmm? What would you say if I got married again? Well, what brought that on, Pop? Well, I, I figure you'll be through school soon. Probably be going to college or getting married, maybe. Man's got to have someone look after him in his old age. I got that job coming up. She the girl you met down at Tony's pub? Mm -hmm. Did you love her? Oh, she's wonderful, kid. Sweet as pie, you know what I mean? <laughs> Who are you trying to convince, me or you? No, really. She's different. Pop, if you got married, you'd have to hold a job. I would, boy. I'd do anything in the world for her. Well, I guess you love her then. Mm. Would you mind? No. I think it's great. When's a big day? That isn't settled. Pop, have you asked her yet? Fact is, I haven't, but that won't be no problem, boy. I can tell. Well, I'm real happy for you, Pop. You know, I guess there's nothing in the whole world as nice as being in love. Hiya, kid. Hi, Mr. Matthews. We've got another deal going. How much is involved? A million dollars, cash. Matthew, you want to sign these papers? Later, kid. I'm real busy. Okay. We've handled some big deals before, Walt. But never a million dollars. Everybody, we've never brought in this much heroin before. What's our cut? 25 percent. Good enough. The boats go in Saturday night. Money will arrive here sometime Saturday afternoon. Who's bringing it in? Never mind. It's coming. You can rest assured. Now, I'll put it in the safe. And at exactly 11.15, I'll be back with the guy carrying the dope. I'll give him the money, and we'll make the exchange. Isn't it a little risky leaving a million dollars in the safe that long? Nobody will know it's there. And I'd rather have it here than carry it around, if you follow me. Sure. Now, all you have to do is open the doors for us at 11.15. And then stand by to make sure that there's no double cross. OK. Well, that's it. It's all we have to do now is wait. 
disappointed in you, Mom. Hey, Mr. Carter. I think you do. Well, we might as well get this over with as quickly as possible. He wrote your paper, didn't he? He... Of course not. I wrote it myself. Oh, come now, Betty. You have many attributes, I will confess. But a comprehensive understanding of Shakespeare and his works is not one of them. I studied. I worked real hard. Well, Marv, you want to tell me the truth? She wrote it honest, Mr. Carter. All right, Betty. What is it all about? about Shakespeare and his plays. You didn't even read it, did you? Of course I read it. I wrote it. Now, look. Neither one of you is fooling anybody but yourselves. Now, come on, Marv. Admit it and get it over with. Come on! Yes, sir. That's better. You didn't have to tell him. He couldn't prove it. I hope you understand that I'll have to fail you for this, Betty. As far as you're concerned, Marv, your grades are too good. I can't possibly fail you. I can't even blame you when you come right down to it. But I am going to withdraw my recommendation for the scholarship. I thought that you were different, Marv. But I guess I was wrong. You don't deserve that scholarship, and you know it. You're just bitter because you can't do anything but earn 60 bucks a week with your fancy words and big brains. You have no right to flunk me. That's all you're worried about. You don't even care that Marv may lose his opportunity to go to college because of you. All right. That's all. You're both excused. Betty! Betty! Look, stay away from me, you thing! Betty! Look, you didn't have to tell him! But he knew! He didn't know! He couldn't prove it! Betty, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Well, be sorry somewhere else and just leave me alone, huh? You mean it's over just because of this? Over? Now, what's there to be over? Well, I thought you said that... Look, I didn't say anything. You did all the talking, remember? Oh, wow, you're just using me. That's right. Look, all I know is now I'm... My father's gonna kill me. He really will, and I'm not gonna graduate. And I guess things just don't want to work out for me. Betty? Betty, you said that you wanted to come back and throw diamonds and minks in his face. So? So if I could get those things for you, well, would it make a difference in the way you feel? I mean, about the whole world? Thanks, Mar, but it won't help. I mean it, Betty. Would it make a difference? Well, bring him around first chance you get. Might make a difference at that. I'll put it in the safe. Isn't it a little risky leaving a million dollars in the safe that long?
Turn me down. I ain't good enough for her. Ain't got enough dough. They're all alike. Only thing they want is money. Nobody will know it's there. Nobody will know it's there. Nobody will know it's there. Pop, I'll be right back. Where are you going? You're going to see that girl again, No, I'm not going to see that girl again. She's just like all the rest. You'll see. Lay down, Pop. I'll be right back. Marv, don't go. You're my son. You're all I got left in the world. Come on, Bob, and I'll help you on the sofa. I'll be right back, Bob. When I get back, maybe we can show them all the things, too. I just be jealous, that's all. Well, you know, I don't know it. Well, you know, I, I'm supposed to be so hard and tough and all. Tell me you love me. I love you. Again. I love you, baby. I love you. When are you going to prove it? Prove it? You mean you don't believe me? Oh, I believe it. But a girl likes to see something real, you know. What do you mean, like a car or jewels or something? Oh, or something. <laughs> you'll have it all someday, baby. I swear it, you'll have it all. When? Soon. When I get out of school and have a chance to look around a little. Now, what if someone comes along who already has it? I kill him and take it away. Tell me again. I love you, baby. Mm -hmm. out of my register. Samuel, please, my most valuable possessions. Sure, for stealing my cigars, drinking my wine, and dipping into my cash register. Samuel, I'm shocked. Your own flesh and blood. My what? 
Just because I married to your sister doesn't give you cause to come in and nail my inventory. Well, she's your wife, isn't she? Yeah, but... And she's my sister. Sure. Then you admit it, what's yours is mine. Look, I don't want to be a nag. Why don't you go get a job? A job? Would you have a doctor take up a pick? A chemist sit behind the wheel of a truck? If he was making a bum out of me, I would. Samuel, I'm a professional man. There's no other way. Now, you were in the rackets, you ought to know that. Yeah, but I gave it up ten years ago. Sam? Hello? Yeah. Yeah, dear. Potatoes? Bread? Yeah, I'll pick it up. No, I won't forget. Yeah, goodbye, dear. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Your sister. Your wife. Samuel, you are the last of the great gentlemen. Have a cigar. Beat it, Bronk. You ain't old enough. I'm not here to buy liquor. Sorry, we're fresh out of Cokes. Are you Sam Tolman? Yeah, so... I understand you're a friend of Harry March. Harry March? Who's Harry March? About the best safe cracker around. Maybe the best in the business. Never heard of him. Okay. Just thought you might be interested in a deal. Wait a minute, kid. What kind of a deal? What difference does it make? You said you didn't know him. I make friends real easy. What kind of a deal? A big deal. A million dollars cash. A million dollars cash? Kid, I'm busy. Why don't you go tell your fairy tale someplace else? I mean it, a million cash. And so where is it? Maybe it's in the Mint or maybe it's in Fort Knox. It's about six blocks from here. You liar. Look, I know where the money is and I know how to get it. All I need is someone that can open a safe. So you ain't lying. How does a punk like you know where a million dollars is? Mr. Tom, in all my life, my brains have been sort of a curse. Now, maybe I can make it pay off for everybody. Let's say that you know where a million is, and let's say you have a plan how to get it. Where do I come in? And Harry? Well, you just tell Harry to be here tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. I'll explain it then. Okay, kid, I'll have him here, but if you're lying. I've already had one beating today. I don't suppose another one would kill me. Well, where's your young genius? He said eight o'clock. It's only a few minutes after. I'm surprised at you, Samuel. This is obviously somebody's idea of a joke. Look, that's what I thought at first, but I could swear he was on the level after talking to him a while. If there were a million dollars hanging about someplace, every operator in the country would know about it. Maybe so, but... That's probably him now. Here he is, Harry. Marv Grant. Harry March. Glad to meet you, Mr. March. I've heard quite a bit about you. All good, I might add, depending on which side of the law you hold with. Thank you. Gentlemen, let's not be so polite. I can't keep the store closed forever. I gotta make a living. Okay, sit down. I'll explain it to you. Now, tomorrow night, there's a freighter docking at the pier. The Rose Lee out of Hong Kong. So? There's a shipment of pure heroin being smuggled in on that ship for delivery here. Wait a minute. I refuse to have anything to do with narcotics. Besides, it's a federal rap. Yeah, besides, you said it was cash. I'm getting to that. Now, the syndicate here has agreed to take the heroin off the hands of the present owners for a million dollars cash, relieving them of the risks and headaches of distributing and selling this stuff. So we grab the million before it gets to the guys with the junk. Exactly. One million dollars in untraceable, unmarked, Probably highly ill-gotten cash. Very well. So far, so good. Now, what about our cut for Sam and me? 55-45. Take it or leave it. We'll take it. Now, what's the setup? 
Walter Matthews is the middleman. He's a guy that owns a warehouse on the dock, huh? Right. A million dollars will be in his safe sometime tomorrow. At 11.15, Matthews and the dope owner arrive to exchange the heroin for the cash. Except by then, we'll have the cash. What's to prevent us from taking the money before it ever reaches the safe? I don't know when it's coming or how. If I knew that, it'd be easy. As it is, we'll be in a little after 11 and out a little before 11.15. Why can't we get in by 10.30? And out in plenty of time. Well, it's not that easy. There's one main entrance to the warehouse. With the sliding steel door locked from the inside. So, how do we get in? At exactly 11 o'clock, the second shift watchman comes on. The guard inside unlocks the door and the new guard goes in. We go in with him. Now, you wouldn't mind knocking out a couple of guards for a half a million dollars cash, would you? I guess I can handle it. All right, once we're in, there's only two things left. Open the office door and open the safe. It's imperative that we be in and out in ten minutes before Matthews and the other man arrive. Can you do it? There isn't a safe built that I couldn't open within six minutes. Good. Well, that's it. Any questions? What about alarms? Only two in the building. One at the main entrance and one at the smaller back entrance. We'll leave by the smaller back entrance, but don't worry about the alarm. It takes the police almost four minutes to respond and arrive at the scene. By that time, we'll be long gone. Sounds good to me. Sounds too good. Who ever heard of picking up a million that easy? Well, it wouldn't be that easy, Sam, except for one thing. The holders of the money are involved in a rather illicit operation themselves, and they can't afford the elaborate protection that, say, a bank might. You know, when you think about it, we're doing the world a favor, taking the money from them. It helps keep the heroin off the market. All right, any more questions? Okay, we'll meet back here tomorrow night at 10 o'clock. And bring a car and a suitcase. Oh, young man. I've worked with the best. But if you ask me, you've got a great future in this business. I don't think so, Mr. March. As far as I'm concerned, this is strictly a one-shot affair. Some kid, Harry. A real naive. How do you mean? I don't think it ever entered his mind we could cross him. He spilled the plans. Everything. What's to stop you and I from heisting a joint alone? Just one thing, Sam. Anna, if men like us don't have that, we don't have anything. Hello? Hello, Betty. This is Marv. Please don't hang up. I've got to talk to you. No, thanks. I thought I made myself pretty clear. Please, Betty. This is important. Not on the phone. Can you meet me somewhere? Why? Money, Betty. Lots of money. Money to buy you everything you've ever wanted. Are you there, Betty? Look, is this a gag? I hope to die if it is. Where do you want me to meet you? Joe's Diner, 7th and Adams. Would you like some coffee? No, let's just get to the point. I'm going to get some money, Betty. Oh, really? How much? Lots. Enough to buy you all the diamonds and mink coats in the whole world. Your boss make you president of the company or something? No, but I'm getting it, I swear it. Well, did you get me all the way down here just to talk? Where are you getting this fortune? I'm stealing it. Your what? Oh, look, cut it out, will you? 
You haven't even got the nerve to lie. I mean it, Betty. I'm stealing a million dollars. Look, you shouldn't joke about these things, Mark. I'm not joking. I found out where there's going to be a million dollars cash, and I worked out a plan to steal it. You're really serious, aren't you? You'd really do that for me? Betty. I'm in love with you. Can you get away with it? I know I can. I've got the best safe crack in the business lined up to do it with me. When? Saturday night at the warehouse. We'll have to split with the other guys, but there'll be over half a million for us. I could have everything I've ever dreamed of. I could finally spit in his face. You're crazy. You're out of your mind. Oh, am I? Listen, mister, I'm giving you a break you haven't got coming. A break? Asking me to heist a million bucks from guys who'll be armed to the teeth? So who says you can't carry a gun yourself? I never have. Look, I've got radios, hubcaps, stuff like that, but I'm no big-time operator. So what are you, then? All you have to do is grab them when they come out with the money. Look, you can get Larry and Bert to help you. You don't have to tell them how much it is. Look, aren't I worth it? I don't know. Oh, let me clue you, Buster. I'm getting out of this dump one way or the other. Now, if you want me to go with Marv, that's okay. But I'm giving you the chance to take me. You, you wouldn't go with him. No, not really. Wouldn't I? For half a million bucks, I'd go with anyone. Even if you didn't love him? Now, what's love got to do with it? I, I don't know. Look, Finn. I want you, I really do. I've wanted you for years, and you know it. But I want something else, too. And maybe more than I want you, even. And if I can have them both, that's great. But if I have to choose... Will you do it? Okay. Package here for Mr. Matthews. Okay, I'll see you get some. Okay, buddy, thanks. Me? Yes, sir, it is. Bring it in here, Got in the house, you want to bang? No, you finish it. You going out? Uh huh. Well, don't you have some homework? Up at Saturday night, remember? School finished Friday. Oh, sure, yeah. I keep forgetting. You got a date? Yeah, sort of. Marv, huh? did you get your check? Pop, I don't get paid until the 15th. You know that. Oh, yeah, that's right. 
Jeff, that Mrs. Fisher's coming up for the rent tonight, and I was wondering... You blew your job, didn't you? What happened, Pop? Well, he reconsidered. Said he guessed I was too old. I don't know what to do, boy. Everywhere I turn, the same thing happens. Pop, everything's gonna be all right. It ain't fair to you, kid. No, it's true. I'm a burden. If I weren't around, you could do anything you want. Live your life the way you want. Go to college. Look, like... Pop, I don't want you talking like that anymore, you understand? Marv, listen. I want you to know one thing. No matter what happens, I want you to know I tried to be a good father to you. Really, I tried. You're the best father a kid ever had. Maybe I don't iron your shirts too good, but... Pop? Yeah? Everything's gonna be all right, Pop. Sure, sure. You okay? Sure. No more booze? Oh, no. Now, look, get going. You'll be late. Have a good time tonight, kid. Stay out of trouble, huh? Sure, Pop. Remember what I said, Pop? Everything's gonna be all right. Sure, I'll remember. That's five in a row. Are you cheating? Honor, Sam. Remember, honor. Oh, yeah, sure. How much you owe me? About six thousand. Peanuts. Son, hi, Harry. Who's winning? He's killing me. Could you fix these cars? I told you repeatedly, Samuel. I am a thief, not a crook. Everything the same? Mm-hmm. Till the seventh. Come on. Gin. <laughs> I can't win for losing. Figure it up. Well, you fellows have any plans what you're going to do with your share of the money, eh? You bet. That sister of yours has some good things coming for a long time. You know, I figure anybody that sticks with me all these years has got to get a break. You're not so bad, Sam. How about you, Marvin? Me? Oh, I'm gonna get married, go to school. College? Mm-hmm. You know, I've always had a lust for education myself. I wonder if they'd let me in somewhere. Uh, that is, if I had enough money. Sure, you could teach the kids that are at the professor's desk and steal the exams. <laughs> You're snide, Sam, but you are my flesh and blood. Let's play little hearts. We have some time to kill. Okay, but let's keep the stakes low. I don't trust him, and you're too smart. High card deals. You guys stand a shock? Anything pops, lay it on me. We're gonna get ourselves 50,000 bucks tonight. What are you smoking? I'm serious. Dead serious. We can get it. You guys got the guts. For that kind of dough I got guts I ain't even used yet. What's the scam? Okay.
Okay, now you guys hear me, and hear me good. Now you guys ain't gonna believe half of this. None of it, maybe, but it's all true. Now, there's gonna be a safe robbery tonight. Not more than three blocks from here. Now, I know who's pulling it, and I know what we gotta do. All we do is wait for them to come out with the loot, and then we grab it. It's so easy, it scares me. Who? Who's doing it? Who told you? Marv Grant. Oh, come on, Vince. Quit putting this out. I'm telling you. You mean all we gotta do is walk up and take it? That's right. With these. Why can't I attract real dames like I attract this lousy queen of spades? It's almost quarter off. Let's get going, huh? No. I don't want to leave until exactly 10.45. Why can't we leave now? Why do you have to cut it so fine? Look, I've timed the ride a dozen times. It takes exactly 11 minutes to get from here to the warehouse. Besides, I don't want to arrive at the ferry boat until exactly 10.52. We don't want to be hanging around the barrier. Very well. Relax, we'll make it. What is it? Looks like an accident. What we do? This is the only direct street to the ferry. We'll have to detour. Hurry up. We're dead. Well, there's another ferry in two minutes. We'll never make it. We've got to. Come on. Kill your lights. Especially tonight. What do we do now? Oh no. Accident. Stupid. 
stupid accident. Listen. Seven after. We haven't got much time. This might do it. Well, they're in luck. This one's easy. It's 11.08. Keep your fingers crossed. Got it. Look at it. A million bucks. It's beautiful. Come on, we have much time. Look, the cops will be here any minute. You can have some. Shut up and give me that money. Crazy, Vince. You didn't have to do that. Come on, let's go, Larry. The last of the great gentlemen. Didn't even have a gun. Get out of here. I am loaded down with snow. Remember? Why? 
I don't know, Harry. I'm sorry. Pop, forgive me, Pop. <laughs>